Hello everyone, I hope you're doing well. In Wednesday's video, I talked about my trip to Japan in 2020. I gave a short biography of Sadako Sasaki and I made a few mistakes. I wanted to make this video to correct these mistakes and give a full biography of this little girl. Now my journalistic integrity is very important, which is why I'm making this follow up today. Thank you for coming with me on this journey. Now please remember my Japanese is not the best, but I will also include the Romanaji on screen in case I make any unintentional errors. Sadeko Sasaki was born January 7th, 1943 to Sijio, a barber, and his wife, Fujiko Sasaki. She was 19 months old and at home on August 6th, 1945, when the bomb was detonated 2,000 meters above the city of Hiroshima. Her home was roughly a mile outside of the deadliest hit area. The first mile in diameter was the most deadly, with only a few exceptions. Anyone indoors or outdoors was killed instantly. Sadeko was at home with her mother and grandmother. The force of the explosion had blown the toddler through the kitchen window and she landed in the garden. Her mother and grandmother were able to get out of the house and thankfully she was found alive. Her mother took her in her arms and sought to get as far away from the affected area as possible. Her grandmother went back inside to retrieve something and was never seen again. The explosion had created a fireball roughly 900 meters in diameter and burned at almost the same temperature as the sun, leaving all in the city parched and thirsty with dry throats. Radiation from the explosion mixed with the clouds above and then it rained down onto the city, a phenomenon that is now known as black rain. It's soot and radiation mixed with the rain that the victims drank graciously, looking to parch their thirst. Most structures were on fire and the air was so thick with smoke that it was hard to breathe and the survivors could not see but a few feet in front of them. Many who drank the black rain had succumbed to the radiation poisoning and died a week later. Sadako and her mother were fortunate enough to have survived the whole ordeal. As she grew up, Sadako and the members of her family were labeled as Hibukusha. It's a Japanese term that means bomb affected person or survivor of the bomb. The people who survived in the hardest hit areas were given this label, and in Hiroshima, they became second-class citizens within their own city. Superstitions were created by the people far enough away from the bomb that they were not affected directly, and they looked down at the people who were directly affected by the bombing and hit with radiation. As Sadeka grew up, she found a love for running and became a part of her school's relay team. Her dream was to one day become a gym teacher. In November 1954, she started noticing a swelling around her neck. Then in January 1955, she developed purpura on both of her legs. It was then when she was given the diagnosis of leukemia. Many who survived the horrors initially of the bombing were then developing cancer around 10 years after the event. Leukemia was spreading rampantly in these children. Sadeka was hospitalized on February 21st, 1955, and doctors told her she had no more than a year to live. The hospital she was admitted to was the Hiroshima Red Cross Hospital, and she received daily blood transfusions. At one point, her white blood cell count was six times higher than normal. In August, she was moved to a new room and given a new roommate, Kayo, who was two years older than her. Kayo's classmates had sent over paper cranes as a gift. On August 3rd, Sadeka's best friend, Kazuko Hamamato, was visiting her and told her of the legend of the thousand paper cranes. She told her that if she made 1,000 paper cranes that she would be granted a wish. Sadeko decided to take up this challenge and made as many paper cranes from any piece of paper that she can get her hands on, as paper was a rare commodity in the hospital. Her wish was that she would be healthy and be able to go home to her family again. She made cranes using medicine wrappers and then bits of newspaper that she found at the hospital. Her friends and family would bring her paper whenever they came to visit, whatever they were able to get. Now, there are two accounts as to if Sadeko achieved her goal. The first comes from novelization of her story called Sadeko and the Thousand Paper Cranes, which claims she only created 644 before her death and her classmates created the remaining 356 and buried them with her. The second account comes from her older brother and the Hiroshima Peace Memorial Museum that claims she exceeded her goal and made 1,300 paper cranes in total. Around mid-October 1955, Sadeka's left leg became swollen and turned purple. She had also stopped eating. After much insisting from her family, she finally did ask for something to eat. She asked for tea on rice, which is called Kazakh, and she told them it was tasty. She then thanked her family and ended up passing away that morning on October 25th, 1955. She was only 12 years old. 
Her body was then studied by the Atomic Bomb Casualty Commission before she was cremated and laid to rest in a family plot in Fukuoka Prefecture. Her classmates started a fundraiser by publishing a collection of letters and used the money raised to create a memorial for their fallen friend and the other children who were becoming sick because of the atomic bomb. In 1958, a statue to Sadeka was unveiled in the Hiroshima Memorial Peace Park and was dedicated to all the children affected by the bomb. A plaque at the base of the statue reads, This is our cry. This is our prayer. Peace and the world. In the years since, Sadeka has become the face of the victims of nuclear war and a symbol of peace. Many around the world still make paper cranes to honor her legacy and send them to Hiroshima. They're turned into the artwork that adorns the statue. Her parents and brother, Masahiro Sasaki, have been lifelong advocates for peace. Her father passed away from cancer in 2003, and as of recording of this video, her mother just celebrated her 105th birthday. The family still keeps their daughter's legacy alive and is still working for peace and deterrence to war, especially nuclear war. Well, everyone, this is where I'm going to end it today. I hope you all enjoyed this tale and, and you were able to take something out of it. I'm going to leave a few links in the description, including to the Hiroshima Peace Memorial Museum's website and also a website to Hibakusha survivors and their stories. Well, take care, everyone. Hope you have a pleasant day. Goodbye for now.